Hello again. Thank you for being here. It's because of you why my channel is growing at a lovely steady pace and I'm really, really grateful for that. And in this video, I'm going to explain how the stop system works and the electrical system on the Briggs & Stratton Classic Sprint Quattro style lawnmowers. So like this one here with the primer bulb where the carburetor is adjoined to the fuel tank. A lot of them are labelled Classic 35 like this one. It's actually the type that's famous for the diaphragm issues. So as usual, like all my other videos, you can expect some detail here. I shall be explaining what electron flow is and how the engine creates it to create a spark and then I shall be showing you how the engine turns off that spark to turn off the engine. And so now, let's get into it. OK, so in order to get a firm understanding of how the stop system works and how it can fail, we need to take a look at how the electricity in this case is generated and how it moves through the system as current. So it may come as no surprise whatsoever that the conductible core of the stop wire is usually made of copper, because copper is a very good conductor of electricity. And what do I mean by a good conductor? Well, to answer that, we'll have to take a look at the smallest part of the copper, the copper atom. So we'll just spend the next one and a half to two minutes on the basics of the atom. And basically, it's the structure of the copper atom that makes copper so conductible. And that is, whilst it's got 29 electrons that orbit its centre nucleus, it's this electron that exists alone on the outside of all of them that allows for that conductivity. And how does it do that? Well, each time the magnetic field of the flywheel's fixed magnet passes some of the copper coiled wire inside the coil pack. This lone outer electron, which has less electrical attraction to its atom, is pushed on forward away from the atom by that magnetic field towards the next atom. It was this electron that was pushed this way by the magnet's magnetic field. Now, of course, the magnet moving past the wire wouldn't just move the electron from one atom, it would move the electrons from billions. I'm just making this simple example. But how does this all relate to creating an electrical current? Just for simplicity, if we imagine the electrical circuit being in a loop like this, then we can now imagine that when a stimulus moves one electron from an atom across to the next atom, then that's going to keep going on as like a chain reaction down the system, creating a movement of electrons in this certain direction. And this is what we call electron flow. This is the electrical current. And of course, if we want to keep the flow, we've got to keep providing the stimulus to move those electrons across. And that's done by repeatedly passing the ignition coil with the fixed magnet on the flywheel. So our system would consist of the copper coiled wire in the coil pack where the electrons are pushed forward initially. And then it goes through the electrical wires, either through the HT lead to the spark plug, down the special conductive core of the plug, and now these trillions of negatively charged electrons can sense ground. And because this ground is more positively charged than themselves, they arc across the gap. And as they arc across the gap, that's creating the spark. And they instantly move through the outer grounded area of the spark plug and into the engine body, where it's not necessarily positively charged, but because it's more positively charged than all of those negatively charged electrons that's why they're attracted to it. And for that reason, this is what's known as a ground. The engine body, or the ground, then has contact with the ignition coil and some of the copper coiled windings inside. And so the electrons would flow like this, from the coil, to the spark plug, to the engine body, and back to the coil again. Now I'm not saying that the engine block has a direct contact with the coil windings all of the time because if it did so, then the electrons wouldn't flow to the spark plug. They'd go direct into the engine block, because that would be the path of least resistance to the more positively charged engine ground. And I'll explain why this is the case very shortly. But nevertheless, because we've bypassed the spark plug, the engine just wouldn't run. So if we look at that on an actual lawnmower, we'll see that we've got the ignition coil bolted onto the engine block right next to the flywheel. And underneath it right here, we can see the stop wire, or the kill wire, the earth wire. 
and we can see the spade connector where it connects to the unit which is in direct contact with the coil within. So the wire runs from this point underneath the coil right round to the back of the engine where it meets the switch which is underneath this cover on this particular type of mower. So the wires run from the coil to the back of the engine to the switch here and it terminates onto this part where it's got a direct contact with these parts. So all of this highlighted area has a direct connection to the stop wire and these areas are separated from its stand and the engine block which are both ground by some special insulation material here. And so it's this special tip that's connected to the kill wire that's the only part that comes into contact with this movable area here which is also part of the engine ground. So when the operator pushes the lawnmower's OPC lever or operator safety lever what it's really doing is pulling this part of the switch away disconnecting the two. And at the same time it pulls away a special little brake pad which has been holding the flywheel in a certain position when the safety switch is not pressed. So in this position where we would say the switch is on or open that is in the position ready to start the engine there's no direct link to ground. So when the coil generates its electric current the electrons can only sense ground this way through the spark plug. And that's of course the reason they naturally flow there. But the electrons want to use the most easy and direct route to ground. And that means that when the stop switch is in the off position, creating a direct link to ground, then this now becomes the most favourable and direct route for the electrons to reach ground. They will always choose the stop wire because that has direct physical contact between the coil and ground. Whereas this way there's no direct physical contact to ground because of the spark plug gap. And so the attraction of ground for the electrons would be weaker through the spark plug and so a stronger electrical attraction that the electrons have for the ground. And that means if the electrons are finding ground this way then they are not going this way and arcing across the spark plug gap in order to find the ground, thus creating the spark. So that's now stopped the spark from occurring and stopped the engine. And so when the stop switch is in the on position, breaking any physical route to ground whatsoever, then the electrons will be attracted to the next best ground and that's the ground through the gap of the spark plug. And so two things happen simultaneously when the operator releases the OPC lever. Firstly, as we've seen, the electrons go straight to ground and cut off the spark. At the same time, the special brake pad contacts the flywheel and stops the engine from rotating. So when this is let go, it's the safety mechanism to stop the engine and the blade instantly. If you'd like to see a video on some engine failures and diagnosis associated with these engines and this particular stop system, then I do have some videos on this and I'll leave them in the link below in the description. In the meantime, I want to thank you so much for watching this video and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.